Good morning. Today's lesson is 5.3. Today we're going to do some problem solving with common factors. Our essential question, how can you use make a list strategy to solve a problem with common factors? Let's unlock the problem. Chuck has a collection of 30 a collection with 30 pennies, 24 quarters, and 36 nickels. He wants to arrange the coins into rows. Each row will have the same number of coins, and all of the coins in a row will be the same. How many coins can he put in each row? The information used in the graphic organizer below will help you solve the problem. So what do I need to find? Well, I need to find the number of coins that can go into each row so that each row has the same number of coins and all the coins are in this in, the, in each row are the same. And I get that from going back in the problem. It says he wants to arrange them into rows. Each row will have the same number of coins and all the coins in each row will be the same. That's how I got that answer. Now, what information do I need to use? Well, Chuck has, so again, I looked back in the problem and I saw that there were 30 pennies, 24 quarters, and 36 nickels. And just like it says here, the, I needed the same number of coins in each row and that all the coins in the row would be the same type of coin. So how will I use this information? Well, I can make a list to find all of the factors of the 30, the 24, and the 36. And then I can use a list to find the common factor. A, a common factor is a factor that two or more numbers have in common. So if I list all the factors of 30, all the factors of 24 and all the factors of 36, then I can find the ones that they have that are in common. So again, you can take a multiplication chart. Make it totally help you. So for example, if I'm looking for 30, I'm just gonna highlight. So I could go through here and I could find all the 30s. There, whoops, that does not work, does it? Let's circle it instead. So there's 30 and it's multiplied by six and five. Let's keep going. Uh, there's 30, and it's multiplied by 10 and 3. There's 30. So do you see how a multiplication chart can kind of help you? So if you wanted to use that, you are welcome to do that. So for 30, we know that 1 times 30 is 30, so that those two are factors. We know that 2 times 15 is 30. We know that 3 times 10 is 30. We know that 5 times 6 is 30. So those are my factors of 30. So now let's do 24. 1 times 24 is 24. 2 times 12 is 24. 3 times 8 is 24. And 4 times 6 is 24. If I'm looking at 36, I know 1 times 36 is 36. I know 2 times 18 is 36. I know 3 times 12 is 36. And I know that 4 times 6, oh no, 4 times 9 is 36. So those are all of my factors. So now I'm going to use the green to find the ones that are in common. Well, they all three have one. They all three have two as a factor. All three of them have three as a factor. Two of them have four, but the other one doesn't. Two of them have six, but the other one doesn't. And 10, 8. Oh, we've got two of them have 12, but the other one doesn't. 15. Yep, that's it. So the common factors are one two, and three. Oh, actually, I missed one. Four times six is, sorry, four times nine is 36, but also six times six is 36. So six is a factor of 36. So they also have six as a common factor. Sorry about that, I missed that one. So if the common factors are one, two, three, and six, then you could put the coins um, in a row of ones. You could put the, co the coins in rows of twos, the coins in rows of threes, or the coins in rows of six. 
So let's try another problem. Ryan collects animal figures. He has 45 elephants, 36 zebras, and 18 tigers. He will arrange the figures into rows. Each row will have the same number of figures, and all of the figures in the row will be the same. How many figures can be in each row? Use the graphic organizer below to help you solve the problem. So this is exactly like what we did before. So what do I need to find? Well, I need to find the number of figures, right? Because that's what it says. He's going to arrange them into rows, and each row is going to have the same number of figures. So I need to find out how many figures are going to go into each row. I need to find the number of figures that can be in each row so that all the rows have the same number of figures and all the figures in a row are the same. What information do I need to use? So Ryan has 45 elephants, 36 zebras, and 18 tigers. Again, I look back in the problem to find that. And just like up here, each row needs to have only one type of figure and all the rows need to have the same number of figures in each rows. How will I use the information? So I can make a list to find all of the factors of the 45, of the 36, and of the 18. Then I can use that list to help me find the common factors, the ones that they have the same. So I need to make a list of 45, 36, and 18. So I've got to think about what can make 45. 1 times 45 is 45. 3 times 15 is 45. 5 times 9 is 45. And again, if you want, you can use the multiplication chart, um, find 45, and then see. So, for example, uh, here's 9. 45 is right here, so that means 5 and 9 are common factors. So, the multiplication chart can help you if you want to. So, let's do 36. 1 times 36 is 36. 2 times 18 is 36, 3 times 12 is 36, 4 times 9 is 36, and then 6 times 6 is 36. And then for 18, 1 times 18 is 18, 2 times 9 is 18, and 3 times 6 is 18. So now all I have to do is just try and find the things they have in common. So they all three have 1. Only two of them have two, so I can't circle it. They all have three in common. Uh, they don't all have five or four. Two of them have six. Oh, they all have nine in common. Fifteen, and that's it. So the common factors that they have are one, three, and nine. So that means that Ryan can put one, three, or nine figures in each row. Lucy has 40 bean plant, 32 tomato plants, and 16 pepper plants. She wants to put the plants in rows with only one type of plant in each row. All rows will have the same number of plants. How many plants can Lucy plant in each row? So this is exactly what we've been doing. So first we read the problem and we need to think about what we're going to find. What information are we going to use and how are we going to use that information? We did that in the last two problems. This is the same theme. So I need to find the common factors of the 40, the 32, and the 16. And I'm going to start by making a list of all the factors for each of those numbers. So the factors of 40, 1 times 40 is 40. 2 times 20 is 40. 4 times 10 is 40. And um, 5 times 8 is 40. The factors of 32, well, 1 times 32 is 40. And 2 times 16 is 40. And 4 times 8 is 40. And again, if you need to use your um, multiplication chart, you can. Factors of 16. 1 times 16 is 40. I'm sorry, is 16. And 2 times 8 is 16. And then 4 times 4 is 16. So now I'm going to figure out which ones they have in common. Well, they both have 1. They both have 2. They both have 4. And they both have 8. I mean, all three, excuse me. Two of them have 16, but not all three. 
10, 20, 32, and that's it. So Lucy can put them in rows of one, rows of two, rows of four, or rows of eight. Now it says, what if Lucy has 64 bean plants instead of 40 bean plants? How many plants can she plant in each row? Well, I would need to, first of all, find out um, what my factors of 64 are. So my factors of 64 are 1 and 64, 2 and 32, 4 and 16, and 8 and 8. So if that were the case, then I'm looking up here in my comments. They uh, So it's instead of the 40, so I'm taking this one away if I'm looking at the comments. I'm actually going to do a different color so I don't get confused. So all three have a 1, all three have 4, all three, I mean have 2, all three of them have 4, all three of them have 8, all three of them have 16, and only 2 have that in common. So if that were the case, then I'm going to put the answer to number 2 right here, then they would have 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16 available to put in each row. So one common factor of 2 is 40, and another common factor is 10. If both numbers are less than 100, what are the two numbers? So again, I could make a list and find out, but I'm just going to tell you it's 40 and 80. If 40 and 10 is what we're looking at as our common, and they are both less than 100, 40 and 80 are going to be the common factors. The sum of two numbers is 136. One number is 51. Let me get these down. One of the numbers is 51. What is the other number? What are the common factors of both of these numbers? Well, if the sum is 136, 51 is one of the numbers, and it's going to be 136 is my total. So if, if the sum of this number, oops, the sum of this number plus the number we don't know is 136, then I could use my little fact families, and I know that 136 minus the 51 should give me that number right there. So 136 minus 51, 6 minus 1 is 5. I can't take the 3 from the 5, so I'm going to borrow from the hundreds. So I'm going to take this 10 and add it here, and I'm going to have uh, 13 tens now. So 13 tens from 5 tens is 8. So I have 85. So this number is 85. So the other number is 85. I'm going to put that in a different color so you know it's the answer. The other number is 85. And then it says, what are the common factors of those two numbers? So now they want to know the common factors of, whoops, of the 85 and the 51. Well, 1 and 51 goes in. 1 and 85. 51 doesn't have too many things that can make it. Um, well, I do know that 3 times 17 is 51 and 1 times 51. So that's it for that one. And 5 times 17 is 85. So it looks like they have 1 in common and they have 17 in common. So again, my answer, I'm going to keep it green, is 85 was the missing number. And the two numbers have in common, I'm going to put that in a different color, 1 and 17. Okay, I'm actually going to have you do number 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then I'm going to have you do the Think Central. But remember to watch this math on the spot because it will help you with these problems here. Okay? All right. Good luck. I'll be on the carpet if you need me.